Hi everyone from uh, London. From hello, our... hello, hello, hello. We're live. Um, oh. This is actually our first experience of doing Facebook Live. Yeah, so if it sucks, be kind. Be kind. I did Facebook Live a couple of years ago promoting a movie, but that was different. It wasn't like at home and it wasn't just us pressing record. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, our comfy sofa where we're gonna start the first topic um, of this evening which is gonna be about traveling traveling between and London and LA which we spend a lot of time in yeah because we we live in both cities and but each one of us has his own experiences because actually when was your first time when you went to LA? I went to LA the first time in 2012 I mean for a week in 2012, for a bunch of meetings, um, to make a conscious choice if I was going to pursue being able to work legitimately in Hollywood. Right, that's actually crazy because we knew of each other, but we were not even friends at that time. Uh, but I was familiar with your work, and my first time in America was also 2012, which is very, very strange coincidence. But we. We met like many years after. You were born in London. I came to London again in 2012 for the first time. I lived here a couple of months and then I moved to LA. So our experiences are different, but the fact is that we share both towns. I wasn't blown away. Um, the thing I loved was walking into like coffee shops and um, you know, bars and just overhearing conversations of creatives, like people just huddled together, like talking about a script they're working on or a film they're trying to get off the ground or an animation that they, they, they have an idea for. And that's kind of like everywhere. Um, so that was weird because it was like, for people that really know me know that um, I'm a little creative kind of bubble. I, I kind of... You are creative. I'm a bit of a, I'm <laughs> a, bit of a kid, you know, I constantly... I have ideas and I create stuff, but it's not, they're not in my head, I get them out there, you know, graphic novels and children's books. And, but it was kind of the first time I'd been somewhere, I was like, wow, there's lots of people like me. <laughs> Everybody around the world <laughs> packed their bags and left their families and came to LA to pursue their dreams. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. And then, um, like Hollywood, I was like, because, again, if you know me, I, I had a... I had a career as a fighter, so I've been in some pretty dark and interesting places in my life. And um, I just, Hollywood was kind of like, it was kind of like, this is it, okay. Um, but I love the fact that it's just courses and workshops and classes were so accessible. Yeah, I, th I have to say that like the best teachers are probably uh, in LA and they are so accessible. Yeah, it doesn't just draw like talent in, in the acting business or, you know, it also draws talent in terms of coaches. Uh, and and even if they're like teaching out of London and, uh, you know, Europe, uh, Australia, they, they actually come there to, to host workshops and stuff. So that was quite a, kind of cool. Um, and then little things like being able to walk to Freddie Roach's wildcard boxing gym was amazing, you know, and just training amongst the legends was just phenomenal. And they're obviously now seven years in, so that was pretty cool. But I, I, for me, it just didn't, I wasn't kind of like, um, I wasn't overwhelmed by it and I wasn't kind of sucked in by it. And I made a conscious choice to kind of like keep a clear head, not be a party boy and just focus on the business. And so my first week there, I had a bunch of meetings with some agents and managers, um, and that was very interesting. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did you drive to the meetings or you walk to the meetings? That's another thing well, about LA because America in general, you've got to drive everywhere. Yeah, well, I um, that week in particular, I hired a car, but the you know London, LA. The thing I love about London is I love, and we're in. We're in a very, I think we're in a lovely part of London, Richmond upon Thames, which is like the borough of Richmond upon Thames, and we have like Twickenham, Tenton, Richmond. You could walk everywhere. And you just can walk to, you know, the park and the river, and you can walk to a restaurant, and you can walk, uh, you, you, you know, to um, a cinema or, you know, 
like 20 minutes we can get be at the cinema or a theatre um, but in LA it's just you have to get in a car I remember my first day coming to America in general which was LA um, I, I I rented a place in West Hollywood obviously everybody who comes to LA first stays in West Hollywood and moves soon after somewhere else a more quiet and peaceful place uh, so um, I didn't have a car but when I saw this massive like sunset boulevard of massive cars because somehow American cars are just big and then in the middle of the day I just needed to buy some food because and I'm in this new country all by myself and I'm walking to 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 uh, props whatever it was and it was about like midday, 1, 8, 1 p.m. There was nobody walking on the street. It's like in the middle of the day. I was embarrassed to walk to the shop, which was probably 10, 15 minutes walk. And there are only cars everywhere. Everybody's driving and I'm walking. And I feel like everybody's watching me. You have this feeling you when you are walking alone on the street. It's really, really weird because it's in the middle of town and nobody's walking. <laughs> it is true. Actually, a few times I got stopped by police asking me if I was okay. In the middle of the day? In the middle of the day and, in, and, and at night. And I got stopped once for crossing the road. Oh. Uh, it's called jaywalking, right? Yeah, well, you can get a big ticket for that. Yeah. It's and like I, about $500. But I was pre prepared because obviously I'm an actor. <laughs> so <laughs> I, did you I, with your British accent? I did. I went, what's going on? Pieces? This yeah. is Cockney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a teacher cop me. And like, um, are you okay to share it? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, mate. I'm fine. I just, uh, I'm just heading back home. You didn't say that. I did. I, I, I played pure, pure kind of London. And um, I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realise it is that you don't know anything. But they basically explained to me that I could be fined for crossing the road, uh, not at the crossing. So it's very walking. kind, kind of, and not actually writing you a ticket. <laughs> yeah, I was explaining to him in London, you cross where you want, mate. No way. But in a very polite way to the officers, but they were cool. Um, <laughs> they probably said, repeat that again, I like your accent. But yeah. But Don't yeah. people say that yeah. when you go like to a coffee shop, oh, can you say that again, please? I love your British accent. I yeah. don't have it. It can, okay. it can happen. It's happening in auditions. I've been to an audition. I've gone in as an American, as they tell you to do, and then um, I've broken into who I really am, and then the casting have gone, where are you from? And I'm like, uh, I'm from London. Can you can you do the audition again, but as a Brit? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just do the auditions. At, at, and they love it. And they prefer that, and you get hired for, hired yeah. for that. <laughs> but yeah, car, cars versus walking. So uh, I think LA. I didn't have a car in my first two years in LA. I was first. I was walking to all my courses because I kind of rented next to the school I was going to. Um, but it was very weird to walk because like people who were studying with me in class would stop and say, like, hey, do you need a ride? <laughs> and you're just walking alone in the middle of the day. And then I got a bicycle, which is actually, I think it's not very safe to, to take the bicycle. It's just cars everywhere. I, I'm kind of scared. I used it a little bit and then it's just, that's it. And after like only on the third year, I think I got a car. Yeah, so I, I, and I was airbnb a lot. Uh, over the last seven years so I kind of got really clear about the area I wanted to stay in and I could walk to the dance studio because I was thinking about tap dancing um, <laughs> the boxing gym and stuff and then the gym which is gold gym um, so kind of my little triangle and then from there I was I was training in Second City and I was training with a few other people and so stuff. everything is like walking distance yeah I could walk to everything so I didn't really need the Uber unless I was going out yeah um, so that was kind of Uber is handy because it was uh, first, in 2012, I didn't know about Uber. I was like from another planet and I used normal taxi, which was very expensive. And then I discovered Uber, yay! <laughs> so on that point, so being in America, and being a British citizen, um, uh, visas. So you want to work in America. Oh, so God. you need a visa. And this is actually a really important topic. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I... Um, my, my first kind of like two, three trips in America, uh, I first went out with no visa, I went to find out about it, how it all worked and what opportunities were there and I met with some agents some, some managers. Mm -hmm. And I realised that I would need a working visa, which is predominantly an O-1 visa. Mm -hmm. You started with that one. Yeah, and the next step up to that is the green card. But um, I went out, 
the first time and just kind of took a view and I thought, well, I doubt I'll get a green card, so I probably have to pursue an O1, which by the way, is time consuming, expensive, and if you don't have credits, it's hard to get. So I pursued that and you... Now it's even worse. And now since the government changed, it's, it's even worse. Like, oh, one, you spend all that money, doesn't even have much value anymore. Yeah, so, but that was the thing. So getting an O-1 visa is one thing, but then can you actually get work with an O-1? Well, you, you can get some work, but it's getting harder and harder in the sense that, like, network, a lot of networks are asking for green for card. For green card, only. yeah. Um, so I'd worked on a couple of things. I'd been, you know, supporting or leading a few films, and then um, I was a recurring on a series, an American-funded kind of produced series, and that, along with my back physical background and you know writing and all the rest, allowed me to when well, yeah. my it helped me to get a green card. Green card, yeah. Um, but I think I would suggest to people who'd never been to America to just explore that. Like first go and I, I get a lot of questions from my friends in different countries like how do you do it's just I think my first suggestion is just you go there as a tourist and explore yeah. do you even like the the place the vibe you, the, yeah the environment, because the... maybe do some courses maybe do like a couple of weeks a, a course of um, some workshop which is very useful and um, see the the town and see if you actually like it because it's it's not for everybody and also it's sometimes it, it's better to work in your own country um, personally, I, I, I never thought I would move to America, but when, and when I went there, I just, it took me a couple of months, first couple of months were like, oh, I really miss my family, I miss Europe, and then, and then I loved it, <laughs> then I just decided, oh, I'm going to commit to it, I'm going to work here, um, so I think before you do like, O1 one and spend all that money on applying, and it's very time consuming, you just go for a trip. Um, and and see the situation, and yeah. then and, do the and, next but, step. But the other thing, I'm, I obviously I went there as a mature actor, and I, and this is the one, this is one, um, one core kind of value point I can I can offer you, and it's just know who you are, you know, because you'll go there and you'll meet people, and they want you to be a bit like this and more like that, and you know, and actually. Your power is you. So I went to these management meetings and these agency meetings, and they were like, "Oh, you remind me of Chloe Verming and a bit of Tony Curtis and a bit of Jude Law, and um, you know." And it, but they just weren't interested in like Jenga service. It was like, you know, if you were a bit more like this or a bit more like that. And so it's finding your tribe and finding the right people who believe in you as much as you do. Um, number one, don't try and go and conform because you'll just be lost in a in a in a big pond. Or a big ocean because there are so many people out there trying to make it in some shape or form and I think that the best way uh, is just to, to lean into yourself and just be authentically you. Um, explore it and then consider visa because a visa is time consuming it's very expensive to get um, and it's just making sure that if you do that route go with a you know a reputable law firm um, that will best advise you and um, and get you visas and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so so London versus LA. So first we've touched a few things, but obviously <laughs> for, for me, I love to walk places, and I I find it the whole car culture is kind of like um, it kind of is a negative for me. But California as a state is unbelievable. It's stunning. If you go outside the town, you yeah. have nature. You can go skiing like two hours drive from so Check this out, right? You can be in Hollywood. You can drive an hour one direction and you can be on the beach. Malibu, Santa Monica. You can drive two and a half hours in another direction yeah, and ski. you can be in the mountains skiing. Or you could go to Joshua Tree. We went there. We'll be in the desert. <laughs> and that's lovely and relaxing and just enjoying the stars, no lights. <laughs> so it's the nature is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, you can you can step out of the kind of hustly bustly uh, vibe of the sea. Also, and it has to be said, there's a lot of homelessness in in LA, in, especially in, in Hollywood town. and down at Santa Monica. And I find that it's it's quite upsetting. Um, it's quite because it's it's around you like. Yeah, you could just go. You see this all these fancy restaurants and outside homeless people and they're like tents I mean I, you know I've walked down the streets with just there are just tent after tent after tent 
yeah. of homeless people. I've seen so many people living in their cars. True. Um, and you're just wondering, are these are these people who came here, you know, Bright Lights, Big City, with that kind of goal and dream to make it as a, an actor or a singer or a producer or a writer? I don't know. But um, it's it's yeah, it's hard to. To but that's be around every day. Like probably it's also because the, the town itself is very tempting, and because it's so many people would come with one objective. I don't know, be a creative or a, a writer, or whatever, and then they just get deviated from their main per goal, and they just go either partying or get into drugs. So I don't know. I saw very we, a, a lot of lost people, and you don't know their story unless you start a conversation, but. Um, there are people who just talk to themselves and be very strange or violent on the street. Yeah, um, I mean, saying that though, we talk about we should talk about crime. I mean, obviously, you know, LA is a big city and, and London's a big city, and um, and there's crime in both cities. Mm. Um, I have to say, I've never experienced any major crime in LA. I mean, there was only what, there was two incidents. One incident I woke up one morning to the sounds of like clicks and I know kind of a lot about weapons and stuff and I was like, that sounded like guns being clocked. Um, and I kind of looked, quietly leaned and looked out one of my windows and I, there was a whole bunch of police and a SWAT team oh. gearing up to go across the road. And that was weird. That was the first time I've seen it. And then they just took this whole building and then brought out about eight hours later. Did you see that? All of it? Yeah. And I, um, so... Did you get out of your apartment? No, I was housebound for a couple of hours. And then eventually they put like these kind of barriers off. And then about eight hours later they brought out some Mexican guys um, when I was back in the evening carrying on with the live soap that was going on on my doorstep. Um, wow. But yeah, I've never really experienced any, like, I've never felt kind of threatened. Um, yeah, it probably Hollywood. depends what, what also where you go. But oh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you kind of personally, that. I thankfully I didn't experience um, any of that. Like, but it's there. You, do, you have to you have to keep your wits about you, and you have to be sensible. I mean, when I was filming in New York, I, I had some incidents, and that was kind of my like interesting because I didn't. When I went to LA, I thought, okay, keep wits about you. It's a kind of tough city. Uh, there's a lot of gun crime, etc., etc. And actually, when I was in New York. Uh, I experienced some stuff. I actually had to confront some stuff, and that was very strange because I ni I was kind of caught me off guard. So I didn't expect to for that to happen in New York. But hey, that again, was in an underground, right? Yeah, well, we won't talk about it. Next. No, we'll about that's going to be in New York. Yeah. I'm still here. It's fine. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah, I can kick that. <laughs> exactly. Um, how about um, healthcare? There is a massive subject, especially. When you're pregnant. <laughs> that's, a, that's an expensive subject. Healthcare, which I yeah. guess a lot of people, unless you're work, I get what, well, as an actor, you if you're working in the union, so we're both SAG actors. Yeah, that's also another thing to touch. Um, yeah, healthcare, I think it's, you have to have this insurances and the basic coverage, the, the minimum coverage, I think it would be about $100 a month. This is like really minimum. Yeah. But if you have proper coverage, I know people who paid from five hundred to thousand, like new moms, to cover. The Just to have what you get with the NHS. Yeah. So that's a massive value. Which, like, I'm going from I grew up in Italy, and that's free healthcare. And then being here in London, it's also free healthcare. And going to America, is scary because well. Mm. For us, we, we get an insurance, but it's scary to live there and say without a health insurance. Yeah. I mean, I mean, nothing's really free because we're paying taxes, but true. It is, um, but you pay taxes in LA as well. Sure. Massive taxes. Yeah, and we pay, yeah, you pay. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's something to bear in mind as well if you're going to position yourself there. Um, but if you become part of the union and you earn what's the the rate now? Twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. You have to do. Um, SAG after projects about twenty thousand a year to qualify, and then then you get subsidised healthcare. Yeah. Which is really really good. Yes. So. Yeah. So that's that's a good one to have. Uh, but if you don't qualify, you have to go to other insurances which are really pricey. So um, that's a massive massive um, disadvantage in US not to have healthcare. 
Um, and um, well, we could talk about unions since we started. Um, an so advantage, though. Why did you US. join? Why did you join the union? I'd like to know. Why did I join? Why did you join SAG AFRA? Not why, how? Like okay, after. well, <laughs> okay. For those actors out there, it's no easy feat. I um, I actually got a letter that um, from them, which I was like quite proud of because it was like. A must join. Yeah. Um, and actually, to have achieved that was like a big step forward in my career because um, I dreamed about being able to work on the kind of projects that I'm going up for now. And to get a letter from the, the union saying, you must join us. Yeah, exactly. I got that cool. letter once I, I shot Lethal Weapon, the TV series. Um, I joined the union and I was very, very happy because it was on my wish list for many years. Um, and obviously it's a massive step forward because we do all like non-union jobs to, to grow into our craft and have experience and then when you finally get this union, first you become union and it's a strong union if you compare it to European ones because... Yeah, it's very powerful and, you're, and, and you're paid sensibly, which, yeah. is, you know, which is very <laughs> lovely and helpful. And coming from independent film and fringe theatre and, you know, it, it was always the goal to get into that professional um, realm. And so, yeah, I, I, I see the value in the union and I, and I support it and, um, and I'm very proud to be part of it. So, yeah, yes. it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it, but every time I, like, I, I talk with other actors from other countries, we have the same complaint, like the union is not really helping much. No. And um, also like there's a lot of projects buy out in Europe where you don't get the residuals. residuals. So that's also that's a disadvantage over like US union projects. Um, that's why a lot of British actors just want to make it <laughs> in US, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I, also it's the scale of some of the projects. I mean, it's yeah, it's lovely to work in, in productions that, you know, throw money at things, uh, in the right things, not wasting money. Yeah. Um, and I know you, you, like me, have worked in so many independent projects with no money um, uh, that you, you can only do those for so long, uh, especially as you just know, you, you come to realise that, is this ever going to see the light of day? And all that effort and energy that goes into supporting that project and then you're lucky if you even see it if it's yourself, distributed. If it's distributed, or if you're even able to get any content from it so you can use it on a showreel to get mm. the next job. I have to say that the turnaround in on union projects in US is so much faster. For example, you can book um, a guest star role today, uh, and then you have to shoot it in in three days. Yeah, you're on so set in three days. While here in Europe, it's everything takes so much longer, at least from my experience, and I've been on big project, big European projects, and I was booked in advance for jobs like six months before the project would start, which wow. is nice because you get preparation time, but at the same time it's like, okay, let's start, let's do it, it's time, while in LA, yeah, in three days and you're on set, but you have to be ready, you, you know, like every time you have to work out like in the gym with your skills and be ready when that day comes and you, you have to be on set in three days uh, and then you already have the dates when it's going to be released the timing especially if it's network project um, and it's easy to get a copy of your footage uh, while with independent movies as we both know yeah. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> we have to chase um, the director or you know production or devil can i have that footage and when they get back to you after a year or two, you don't really need it anymore because it's kind of dated. <laughs> Let's be honest. True. <laughs> I, I want to go back a little bit to the creative community because yeah. again, like, we talked earlier on about the creative community, and the one thing that stuck, that really stood out for me uh, in LA was that I'd go into, and whenever we're there, you go into a coffee shop or a bar or a restaurant, you can always find people talking about projects they're working on, or somebody just sitting there working on a script. Uh, or some illustration, um, but the interesting thing as well is who you bump into, kind of like at the supermarket or 
uh, a coffee shop. I've had so many incidents where I've been at the gym and I've I've been next to Ron Perlman, Hellboy, and Hank I've Brown. been at that gym. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, We're not going to tell you which gym is yeah. that. <laughs> and then I've been at a coffee shop, just sitting there, you know, because it's quite it can be quite lonely a lot of times, and especially if you've got a lot of time in between things. And I'm working on something, and there's been someone standing there, but there's another table. So hey, do you mind if I join you? You've got anyone coming? No, do you mind if I join you? No, and it's like I'm not going to say who, but it's a big name, and they just sit down with you, and you're just chatting away. Um, but it's kind of like the norm because it's almost like a huge open working working studio where people are just there. I think you said it once. It's like LA's your office, and it's kind of like it's cool that you know that it's kind of a cool um, way of putting it that you you know it's a place to go and, and work. But you do bump into a lot of kind of well known, or you see a lot of kind of faces, and it's like oh, that's so and so. More so, I mean, obviously they're all in London as well, but kind of more so. They seem to be a bit more hidden in London, where in LA it seems to be a, just out in plain sight. Yeah, and they're quite humble, at least my experience was meeting really humble actors uh, who are well known, I don't know, for example, Ron Perlman or Al Pacino, you could get into a conversation, they're kind. And yeah, I've been outside, so I've, I've sat next to Reese Witherspoon and a bunch of, bunch of well known faces, I mean the, the list is endless, but you're like, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then going on to sets like Paramount and Fox and stuff like that, it's pretty like, when you sign up, have had auditions at Paramount, and you you go and you sign up at Paramount, and you go and you have an appointment, and then that's yeah, that's powerful because you watch their movies since you were a kid, and now yeah. you are and on you're the lot, there and you're there for a while, and then you're recalled, and you go back, and you're like, and then oh you pick the job, I want to <laughs> the job of my dreams, and then you get it or you don't get it, it doesn't really matter because in that moment it was yours. <laughs> but talking about creative community, so a big difference for me was. Um, well, you're a Londoner, so obviously for you it's easier because it's home for you. But for me, when I came first time here in 2012, it was quite difficult to get into a creative community, at least like find um, an acting circle or friends with the same goals or even find somebody to help me with an audition. It was really difficult. Um, so it took really a while to get into those groups of people while in LA. Um, I got pretty lucky. Well, first I, I went there because of the actor studio, so I, I felt like that was a family immediately. Like first couple of days in America, um, ever, and then I, I get this creative community who is so supportive and helpful, and reading scripts together and shooting auditions or short films. So that was that was really nice to have that base. And um, the, that group of supportive people, and some of them became like best friends for life. And um, and also keep you focused, not getting distracted by all the bars and all the events and the parties. Just, no, I'm, I'm here for this and I want to learn my craft and whatever it is, next step and next step. So that was really, and also you mentioned before, about like being proud of your roots or where you're coming from. So I I had that in that community of um, um, at, at the actor studio that people really were interested where I'm coming yeah. from. I tell you what, at some point I, I, I encouraged Sylvia, but I'd really love to hear Sylvia talk about her journey from Moldova <laughs> and the communism to Italy, to London, to LA. I mean, seriously, I mean, empowering for young women to hear what she went through to get herself to where she got and I have so much respect <laughs> for this woman Thank um, you. obviously I love her too but um, you know getting to know her over the years and just yeah I think at some point that would be a really great conversation just to listen to your journey because I think there are people out there who need to hear it because it will just lift them because you've proven that things are possible and I've had a hard journey too I've come you know I've come come from and that's another conversation too though. <laughs> I think those things are something we can talk about we should write a note so we should yeah. talk about this in some way yeah. because you know you know I think that that is one of the things that kind of brought us together in the sense that we're kind of just quite clear about who we are we're quite clear about what we want um, but it's a hard road yeah it's but, a hard road. but LA I have to say that those years spent there where I was studying and growing that made me really aware of meritocracy that you actually can achieve things if you work really hard and you're focused 
and also being proud of my roots and my family and I come from really humble background so uh, and just being really that knowing who you are you often say and just being proud and sharing your experience with the world I think uh, the conclusion of tonight will keep living in both places as for now <laughs> London, LA, a little bit of Italy um, so we'll keep sharing these experiences with you guys. I think it's time to have a glass of wine and and I suggest you to relax. I have to as take well. a long walk to press the stop button, but <laughs> listen. Know who you are. And whatever it is you want. Go get it. Little by little, brick by brick. That's right. <laughs> there you go.